Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Cassie and you're watching The Victorian Thimble. Today, I'm gonna tell you what I've been up to lately. So welcome back, old friends and new. It's been a long minute since I have posted anything on this site. And there's a variety of reasons for that. So those of you who've been following me since the start of my most recent project, back in September, <laughs> I did start a project making the Duchess of Cambridge's jacket. Since that time, our dear Queen Elizabeth has passed away. We now have King Charles on the, on the throne and Catherine is now the Princess of Wales instead of the Duchess of Cambridge. So first of all, what happened to that coat? I don't think I could call it a Duchess of Cambridge coat anymore. It now has to be called the Princess of Wales coat. However, she was still a newlywed at the time she wore it. In any event, guys, the truth about doing a YouTube channel is that it's challenging. Right? Most of us already have stuff on the go when we decide, I'm going to just start a YouTube channel. And I've had a few really busy months at work where I've just put in a lot of long extra hours and honestly, you get to the end of the day and I'm just done. Dinner, you know, dishes, walk the dog, lather, rinse, repeat, and there hasn't been much time for much else. And then, as the fall season wore on and we came into the Christmas season, that brings its own set of busyness with it as well. And so there we are. We come full circle to where I am here in January, and we're going to finish posting this project. Now you might wonder, is the project done even? It's not. <laughs> um, what I have done, I did finish the dress that goes under the jacket, which is a really important piece. You have to have that underneath layer to make the outfit work. And so if you recall what we were working on, I did a scoop neck dress with a swing skirt out of a light silk-like fabric. Um, and I think we pulled this off well. I actually did finish the dress and wear it to the wedding event that I was going to. I did have to put another jacket on top because I just didn't have the jacket done. So I'm gonna show you now what I had finished. And here you can see the finished dress on display. You're gonna see the remaining steps of this throughout the instructional videos, but you can see it did turn out with a nice full swingy skirt and it is fully lined and that lining hangs loose right? Um, so that did turn out very nice. I was pleased with it. I wore this, honestly, it wore great, guys. And you can see here, we have the invisible zipper installed down the back. And I'll just show you, I'll unzip it to show you again. So now there with this unzipped, you can see it's fully lined as well. And I'll have to stop the video to zip that up. So let's review everyone what we have so far on this outfit. So you can see that the gray dress was like basically done. I could opt to add beading along those seam lines one day if I want to or stuff in between. I'm still undecided to be honest. I kind of liked it a little bit plain like that. It, I think it gives it a bit of versatility. Whereas if I was to add some sparkle beads and things it would elevate the look for sure, but it would also limit the number of occasions I could wear it to. So my thinking is that um, maybe if I just leave it a little bit plain like that, I can use accessories to dress things up and it will make the dress more versatile. I'm thinking of leaving it as it is. And then the other part that you can see here is the jacket. What I've managed to do here in the jacket 
I've installed the piping all the way around. And the piping, of course, is in the Empire Waste area. And then with these flowers here, what I did to duplicate as close as possible to the Duchess of Cambridge's jacket, Princess of Wales now. Um, anyways, what I did was I enlarged the photo that I had from the internet and printed it out. And then I traced the flower shape with a pen and I actually created a cutout stencil so that I could trace these flower shapes top and bottom all the way around. So to be honest, these flower embroidery things that you see here are about as close to the original as you could hope to get from something that you did off of a picture. Like they're pretty accurate actually. And you would not believe how long those things took to sew. I did purchase embroidery floss thread, like, you know, a spool of embroidery thread for the machine because it does have the shiny, glossy finish that does help. And surprisingly, it didn't turn out overly shiny, but it's not dull either. So I'm happy about that. But what I do have here, that took a long time. You wouldn't think it would take that long to sew. I think it was 14 flowers. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 16. So it's actually um, 16 flowers all the way around this thing that I had to sew. So now I wanna take a few minutes and just talk to you a little bit about my channel. For all of you who are old or new, I just wanna say thank you and welcome to the Victorian Thimble. The purpose of my channel is to learn from our past, borrow ideas from the past and incorporate them into designs that we sew today. So clothing, with historical meaning or influence with practical application for today's purposes. That is the whole goal of the Victorian channel. So I'll just give you an example of some of the ways that I have investments in both fabric and patterns. I have so much stuff lined up and ready to go. I just need to carve out the time to sew it. And so the plan is, I think I'm gonna change the channel to be a little bit more vlog style where I'm gonna just talk to you, give you updates, show you what I'm working on. So you're still gonna see sewing, but then the actual sewing projects, the step-by-steps, I'm gonna make those as separate video uploads. What this is gonna do is allow me to contact you and connect with you way more often and show you what I'm up to, show you what I'm working on, and you're gonna see a lot of projects come to completion. So I'll give you an example of some stuff I have. I already have the supplies for, and I'm gonna get started on these projects in the near future. So sometimes I'll go and buy something such as this, like I have this beautiful Rebecca Taylor. This um, Rebecca Taylor as a sewing designer, I actually have quite a few of her patterns, so it seems that I like her style quite a bit. So you can see this blouse here, it's like a soft, uh, like a silk, um, and it's just this soft, buff color. Look at the beauty and uniqueness of the design. I'll show you the back of the pattern here. It has the blouse and the pencil skirt. So I'm probably going to whip off a new pencil skirt to go with this one day. But guys, I got to show you what I found and the price I paid. So I have this fabric here. Do you see how close it is? right? And so it is like us. It's rayon, I believe, made to act, behave like a silk. And guys, I got this on sale for $3 a meter. I ended up getting it in two chunks. See here? But I do have a total of about four meters of this that I should be more than enough to make this blouse. And you can just see it's got that soft buff color and it's just got this beautiful soft flow and drape to the fabric. So that's an example of a way. First of all, I go by patterns. I buy patterns, anything that catches my eye. If you live in Canada, like I do, there's a chain store called Fabric Land that is across Canada, a little more centered in like BC and Ontario, I think, but um, they are uh, all across the country. And Fabric Land, all the time, has a sale bin of patterns. And so honestly, I buy the majority of my patterns for between two to $6. And so for example, this Rebecca Ta Taylor pattern here, it retails for 33 Canadian dollars originally. 
I paid four or five dollars for it out of a sale bin. Right. So I don't spend a lot of money on the patterns, but I do pick stuff that I think is fairly timeless and I'm going to wear well a lot. Right. Another exciting find that I have is this pattern here. And again, Rebecca Taylor. So you can see it's a sundress and it has the accent on the sleeves. And look at this floral print. Now, you guys are not going to believe what I found. You're going to be blown away, I think. Check this out. So what we have here is I did grab four meters of this beautiful. Do you see how similar? Do you see how similar these fabrics are? Incredible. And then you're not going to believe what I found. This beautiful complementary fabric here that is going to stick out like the edge of the sleeve. Can you picture it now, guys? Right? The little sleeve edging, the whole bit. So I have this just like they have the contrasting color on the sleeve. And so guess what? Once again, this was $4 a meter. I bought four meters at $16. I bought a half meter of this at $4. I have all the fabric for that dress for under $20 because I already have an investment in elastic zippers, things like that. And boy, oh boy, guys, as you know, once you start sewing, people just start handing you things, right? Like they clean out their cupboard and they go, oh, I had these extra ribbons and elastic my mother had. I won't use them. Can you use them? And you take the stuff, right? And next thing you know, you have lots of ribbons and lace and accessories and stuff to choose from but basically the point is guys I have lots of neat uh, patterns and designs that I can sew right out of my own stash before we even start to shop for something so it's going to be a two-step process I do plan to build a classic wardrobe and I I mean, hopefully you like the direction I'm going in. And if you don't, this is YouTube. You could just move to the next video if it's not for you. But here's where my heart's at. Uh, lately, I really am into the classic British wardrobe. Think British country fashion design. You know, tall boots, pants, warm sweaters, tweed jackets, all these sorts of things. I do plan to build some of these things into my wardrobe over the next couple of years. But as I've described to you, I do have an investment of fabric and patterns that um, I do want to use those up. And with time, I do plan to do some more pattern drafting and sell some designs, things like that, all in good time. But for now, I just wanted to let you guys know where the Victorian thimble is going for 2023. I am going to change this to a little bit more vlog style. So you're going to hear a little more talking and visiting and showing you the sewist lifestyle, what we're up to, where we fit these times in. And then along with that, there will still be projects that you guys can see and do step by step. So anyways, there it is, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and thanks for watching the Victorian Thimble. Uploads are coming and I will see you next time with your needle and thread at the Victorian Thimble. Bye.